Welcome to another episode of the uh, Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison. We'll be talking sports and life. Got a very special episode with, uh, for you guys today. Got a very special guest with me right now. Founder of Food on the Stove, Jonathan Tate. Hey, welcome to the show, man. What's up, Travis? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Man, I appreciate it. Man, I think I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I know you're doing some special things in the community. Um, I definitely uh, think that the audience uh, should know about and be knowledgeable about. Knowledgeable about. Um, so, yeah, so give us a little bit of background about Mr. Jonathan Tate. Uh, D.C. resident for over 30 years, uh, 35 years, going on 40 years. Um, D.C. firefighter and also founder of Food on the Stove. Uh, husband of Precious Tate, father of Genesis and Judah. Uh, my six-year-old daughter, my three-year-old son. Wow, wow, that's, that's, that's great, man. So what, what led you to become a firefighter? Well, um, I'm a second generation firefighter. My father worked for DC Fire and EMS from 1956 to 1989. So I um, grew up around the fire service, if you will. Um, but also seeing how it was able to provide for my family uh, and the lack of opportunities that were afforded to me, I decided to become a firefighter. Right, right. So what what has been the biggest challenge? Because being a firefighter, people might think is is an easy thing, man. But you know, at the at the same time. You um, you risk your life. I mean, you put your life on the line Indeed. every day, man. But you you also helping so many people, giving in your work. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's several challenges. I mean, the physical challenges of being a firefighter, the mental challenge of the things that you see. Because I'm not just a firefighter; I'm an EMT as well. Mm -hmm. So, whether it's you're seeing death on a daily basis, whether you're seeing people at their worst moments in life, um, can also be mentally challenging, physically challenging. Um, but also health, and I think we'll get into that today. Uh, the health of firefighters—that's a big challenge. Right, and exactly, man. Because you, you know, <clears throat> you talk about being a firefighter. A lot of times, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, you guys are sleeping in the station, correct? Like so, because you're always on call, whatever your hours are. Um, what's your what's your typical hours in, in regards to being a firefighter? Like, what's the hours? So in DC Fire and EMS, you're working for 24 hours on, and then you're off for 72 hours. So. Um, DC runs anywhere from 200,000 calls a year. So uh, you might run anywhere if you're on the ambulance, 20 to 30 calls a day. A lot of those calls may come after midnight, or probably five to eight or 10 of those calls may come after midnight. So it's not a lot of sleep going on in the firehouse. So you're literally up for 24 hours wow. and that can be taxing on your body. Right, so in given that, so how do you, how are you able to take care of your body because you, like you said, you on call like 24 hours. So I'm talking in regards to what you guys eat or how you guys are living, like a sleep, like how does that work in regards to your health? Um, it hasn't been working and that's why I started the organization Food on the Stove. Um, firefighters are dealing with a difficult job, a very challenging job, um, but they take care of the community, but they haven't taken care of themselves. Um, and so what we see is a lot of firefighters dying in the line of duty due to ailments like heart attacks, cancer, and things of that nature. So that's the reason I started the organization Food on the Stove. Okay, so <clears throat> basically because you're saying that you started Food on the Stove because you were seeing the lack of the nutrition that was going on and guys, which guys were eating. So when did you start Food on the Stove and what's that process been like for you and how has it you know, helped and helped you in the stars? Okay, so uh, I started Food on the Stove five years ago, and I'll tell you a, a little bit about Food on the Stove. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization that provides tools and resources to help firefighters live a healthier lifestyle through enhanced nutrition and exercise. And the reason that's so important is that 44% of all firefighters who die in the line of duty die from a heart attack. The studies show that the life expectancy of a firefighter is 10 to 15 years less than every other employee in America. And not only that, we're the only occupation that cooks all three meals while at work. So while there's a lot of good meals prepared in the firehouse, all the meals aren't necessarily good for you, right? So what Food on the Stove does is we're trying to help firefighters be more proactive about their health by first educating them and simply putting healthier meals on firehouse uh, tables. The reason I'm so passionate about that is that, like I said, I'm a second generation firefighter. My father worked for DC Fire and EMS from 1956 to 1989. Unfortunately, nine years after he retired, he passed away due, after having multiple heart attacks and cancer. So when I became a firefighter nine years ago and I saw how we were eating in the firehouse, I said, this is possibly why my father was so sick and I wanted to do something to change that. Uh, so what Food on the Stove is actually a double entendre. It's the number one way that structure fires start due to food being left on the stove unattended. So when I would get on the fire truck and I would run calls and I would hear the officer call on the radio and say, oh, it's just food on the stove, 
I said, you know what, I'm going to take that phrase that I keep hearing every day and help firefighters pay more attention to the food that's on our stove that I believe is ultimately killing us. Wow. Um, so the way I started that is I said, I asked my wife, I said, um, God has given me this vision to help and serve firefighters. And she said, well, how are you going to do that? And I said, you know, I don't really know, but I know I'm supposed to feed them healthier meals. So I went to the farmer's market. I took six grass fed steaks, six stalks of broccolini and six sweet potatoes and delivering them to a firehouse in the Brooklyn area in Northeast DC. Um, and since planting that seed, we have uh, provided over 30,000 meals um, to the fire service. I knew it wasn't gonna be self-sustainable to keep taking food or money out of my own pocket to fund this program. So my prayer was that God will make it self-sustainable. And he did just that. We've been sponsored by everybody from Giant, United Healthcare, Verizon, Host Hotels, and Marriott, and now Amazon Web Services for the development of our app that allows firehouses to order our meal boxes, and we deliver it directly to their firehouse, free of charge to them. Wow. I mean, I, I've never heard of anything like that um, in regards to another firefighter or uh, organization doing like that for you guys. Because like you said, I mean, we see it all the time, like, you know, guys are passing away since being a firefighter because of the smoke or the health reasons or lack of sleep. Like, and like you said, a lot of people don't know that. They're, we're not knowledgeable about that. We don't understand what you guys go through to help us be safe and things like that. So by you doing what you're doing in regards for your, and through your organization, you're bringing a lot of knowledge to people that, had, that didn't know anything about it and people that probably become knowledgeable about it and want to help and basically be of service to you guys. Indeed. So we like to say we're serving those who serve us, right? Um, a lot of the health issues that we see in firefighters are about are caused by a lot of things that you mentioned. Right. Sleep deprivation, hazardous environments, stress of the job. Right. So what we want to do is help firefighters control the controllable. You can't control sleep deprivation. You're working a 24-hour job. It's not natural for you to be up for 24 hours in a day or going from a resting heart rate of 60 beats per minute to 140 beats per minute. You're an athlete, you know. It takes time to get up to that pace, right? But for firefighters sleeping in the bed at two o'clock in the morning and the uh, buzzer goes off and they're sliding the pole, heart racing, going to the firefighter, going to the fire, adrenaline rushing, um, can cause your heart to be overworked and you to be overworked and overexertion. And that's where we find heart attacks and things of that nature. Um, and then you talk about hazardous environments. Firefighters have signed up for this dangerous job. Uh, we've signed up to go into smoke field environments. That's just things that they can't control. Um, stress of the job. I've seen some things on the fire department that I never believed that I would see the things I only thought would happen in movies. Um, and this can affect your health as well. So the way we look at it is the best way to combat heart disease and other ailments are through diet and exercise. Wow. And like you said, man, this is something news to me, you know, um, obviously not been a firefighter, but seeing what you guys do. But like you said, a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the scenes. And like you said, because sometimes when you guys get that call, you don't know what you're getting into. Indeed. You don't know what you're going to. Exactly. So like you said, that, that drilling and rush, you know, the heart pounding, you don't know what's going on. And then like you said, because of the sleep and the way you eat, that can add on factors. Like I said, these are things that people like myself don't have a clue about. So what you're doing, what your organization is doing is huge. Have you seen any, um, because of your job, have you seen any struggles or, or, or complications in regards to doing what you're trying to do? Like, was it like a, a difficult task or what was that process like? Um, no, nah, it, it hasn't been. A, one of the misconceptions that I want to piggyback on that you just mentioned, the things that the public doesn't know, is that the biggest misconception is that firefighters' meals are funded by the government. Um, what most people don't know is that firefighters chip in and they buy their own food, right? Which often leads firefighters to buying the cheapest food possible. So when I first became a firefighter, we all chipped in $10 a day. Um, it was 13 people in my firehouse. That's $130 for three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My wife and I can go out to a restaurant and spend $130 on one meal, right? So imagine trying to feed 13 people on $130. You're going to buy the cheapest thing possible. And firefighters' jobs depend so much on their heart operating properly that they should be getting the best food possible. And what Food on the Stove wants to do is help supplement those costs of meals in the firehouse because firefighters are the boots in the gr on the ground here. Right. And we want to make sure that they're able to do their job properly and effectively. Absolutely, man. I think what you guys are doing is huge, it's, it's needed, it's a necessity. Like you said, because of your job, you can't be just eating anything. Um, you have to eat the best foods, but at the same time, 
is what you can afford or it's, it's the quickest thing I can I can get at that time. So I think you, what you guys are doing is very commendable. Um, and we're going to get more into with Mr. Jonathan Tate after these commercials. Uh, but stay tuned. We got Mr. Jonathan Tate. More to come. Are you a gospel or Christian recording artist and need a platform to play your music and music videos? Well, WBGR-TV and WBGR The Cup radio station has the right stage for you. On our BDS reporting station, you can be viewed and listened to on Roku TV, Fire TV. Just download the WBGR-TV channel or log on to WBGRTV.com to listen to you and your favorite artist 24-7. On the radio tab, WBGR The Cup. We are a 100% brokered station, so if you want to hear your music and watch your music videos on the big screen, call today, 301-429-9247. That's 301-429-9247. Talk to an account executive today. WBGR, where you go, we follow. Welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm the host, Travis Garrison, where we talk about sports and life. Got Mr. Jonathan Tate, founder of Food on the Stove, firefighter, EMT, here with us today, giving us some very knowledgeable, uh, very important information about his organization and the healthy eating and what goes behind that and how it helps his firefighters. So welcome back to the show. Um, like I said, I definitely appreciate you coming on Thank and you basically for sharing me. this must needed to know information. Um, I think the organization that you have, Food on the Stove, is very, uh, and it's, like I said, a necessity and is needed. Um, to basically help uh, further the firefighters' lives because at the end of the day, you guys are helping us and serving us. So um, I think it's very good what you guys are doing. With your organization, have you seen any success stories? Like what, since you started, what has it been like for other firefighters? And like, what have you seen in regards to the results of what you've been doing? So one of the things we just uh, completed is our first study. Uh, we took six DC firefighters, we gave them three meals a day for 30 days to see how food would affect their body over the course of that 30 days. And what we found is that everybody lost anywhere from three to 20 pounds. Um, our, the basis of the study was to focus on um, their leafy green intake, increasing their leafy green intake via salads, but also focusing on portion control. Because oftentimes we overeat and that can be the cause of obesity and other ailments in our lives. So uh, everybody lost anywhere from three to 20 pounds. Uh, their blood work came back, everybody's uh, A1C levels dropped, blood pressure dropped, but the most significant thing that we found is everybody's lipid panel decreased significantly, which is their cholesterol, right? And that can be ult ultimately the culprit of heart disease sometimes, uh, at, in most cases. So what we end up finding with that is, is that when doctors give you a medication for cholesterol, they are looking for a 30% decrease in your cholesterol. Just by giving them the proper food, we were able to get a 23% decrease wow. um, in their cholesterol. And we're hoping that we will get them in, uh, hopefully living a healthier lifestyle. And the goal of this program is that whenever a firefighter is placed off of duty due to health concerns, whether it's A1C levels, blood pressure, high cholesterol, they can voluntarily enter our program. Mm -hmm. We'll give them three meals a day for 30 days um, to get them back to work faster, free of charge. Our goal is all about giving to firefighters. Mm -hmm. We want to give. We base our whole organization on giving and being a conduit of God's love for firefighters. Right. And that's, I, I believe that's, that's awesome. And like you're saying, like, this is, like you say, doing God's work. Indeed, <laughs> doing indeed. Doing God's work. And, and, and this is something that is a necessity, not just here in D.C., but around the world. So what, in regards to your organization, are you looking to branch out and go further beyond this area? Indeed. Um, that's the whole goal. And we have some ways to make that scalable. I mentioned earlier, um, I, I want to go back to tell people why this also is so important for firefighters. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a second generation firefighter um, and firefighting is one of the few occupations where you still receive a pension plan. Right. Most occupations have really gotten away from the pension plan. Um, so my dad working in D.C. and ascending to the rank of deputy fire chief, we were offered some things as kids, my brother and I, that most of my friends weren't afforded. So the Jordans that came out, the New Balance, the clothes, my father was able to provide those things. Unfortunately, when he passed away, his pension got cut in half. He retired with 80% of deputy fire chief pay, but it got cut in half to 40% for my mom. 
My mom is 18 years younger than my dad. For every year younger, it was 1% deducted. Wow. So we went from an 80% lifestyle to a 22% lifestyle. Wow. First time I had ever heard no because my mom wasn't able to give me what I would normally ask my father for. So what did I do? I made some bad decisions in my life. I ended up with um, getting arrested with some drug charges on into my young adult life. But thanks be to God, he redirected um, my focus. Uh, but I often say if my father would have known how it would have affected his family, he would have invested just as much in his health as he did in his 457 plan or his compensation plan. And that's important to know because I often say that um, food on the stove was started by a 15 year old boy who really missed his father. I didn't know I missed my father until I got into the training academy at DC Fire and EMS. And there were so many things that I didn't know about firefighting. And the only person that I knew that knew it was my father and he wasn't there. So now I'm not just fighting for firefighters, I'm fighting for their kids as well. Um, and to, to help those, we have made a plan and doing some very creative things that we think can help scale it across the country. One of those things is our development of our app. If you've ever heard of Blue Apron or Hello Fresh, we developed something similar called Farm to Firehouse. For every $10 we raise, it goes to the protein, produce, and packaging of the meal. Firefighters are able to order our recipes and all the ingredients. We package it up and deliver it directly to the firehouse. And we'll be testing that in Alexandria, uh, Virginia. Um, and I think that will help us scale that because the staffing of any firehouse across the country can upload their staffing into our app and we'll be able to set up a system where we can deliver healthy, free, fresh food to those firehouses. Wow. And just by community involvement. I mean, that, that's, that's, I think, will help tremendously because of what you say in regards to it's times where you guys got to go out and get your own food. Yeah. But now, like you said, because of technology now, <laughs> technology now, you guys are able to, people are able to download the app and basically order from you guys and get it delivered to them. So that helps them, one, eat healthier. Two, not to go out and worry about, you know, getting the food and things like that, and then say it saves money. Indeed. So part of that, too, is sustainability, right? right? So we, like I said, we're based on giving. So how do we make it so, because the cost, food costs, right? And the cost of food is actually going up. So how do we make this sustainable? So, so one of the ways we see about we see ourselves making this sustainable is taking unused or underutilized firehouses from across the country and then turning them into community markets. Every dollar that's spent in that market will fund our farm to firehouse program and put healthier meals on firehouse tables. So when the community goes buys their chicken, their steak, their fish, their fresh produce, um, if they want to buy coffee or they want to buy smoothies or granola, things of that nature, they will enter into this firehouse that has been turned into a community market and knowing that their dollars that are being spent in there put healthier meals on firehouse tables. And the goal will be that the firefighters will get a stipend from the revenue that's generated from that and they can spend 500 to a thousand dollars a month in that grocery store and we'll just deduct it from their account and we'll put healthier meals on their table that way just by community involvement and philanthropic partners. Wow, that, that is, I think that is, I don't see why that couldn't be done. Because like you said, you gotta go out and get your food and groceries anyway. Why not do something where you know the money is going to help you guys who is essentially helping us and well, keeping us safe? It's God's plan, so I believe it <laughs> will work. You know what I mean? So that's he's giving me the vision. I oftentimes say he showed me the ending before he showed me the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, because had I looked at the beginning, I would have quit. There was a lot of challenges and tough roads um, in the beginning. One of the things being COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we used to take a chef into the firehouse and prepare a meal for firefighters on a monthly basis. But when COVID hit, it kind of stopped that whole thing that we were doing. But what God did is he showed me another plan. So for a year and a half, we were able to feed firefighters every day for a year and a half just by partnering with 28 different restaurants. And the reason that we did that, um, firefighters, it was difficult to get food to the firehouse. So if you know, um, the grocery stores put limitations on the amount of food you can buy due to people hoarding food. So you will go to the grocery store, you can only buy two packs of chicken or two packs of steak. But what about the firefighters who were working every day with a firehouse of 15? So they would go to the grocery store and they would still tell them, you can only buy two packs of chicken. And they were like, well, I have to feed 15 people. And there was nothing set in place. And I think the grocery stores really didn't think about firefighting. They just thought about having enough for people coming to the store. So what ended up happening is the greatest show of the brotherhood and sisterhood was that firefighters took food from their own homes and brought them to the firehouse to piecemeal meals together so that everybody could eat. Now here it is, these people working on the front line 
and they're taking food from their own homes, from their kid, their wife and their kids and their husband's mouths to feed their brothers and sisters in the fire service. So what we did is we partnered with 28 different restaurants, everybody from Ruth Chris to Chick-fil-A to a friend of mine owns a burger spot called Eat Burgs. Um, a friend of mine, Eric Bruno Yang, owns a restaurant. He's a board member, um, owns Maketo and uh, another board member of my district fishwife. And they were able to donate and we were able to purchase food and do things of that nature. Um, so we have given over 30,000 meals and a big portion of that has been during the pandemic in that year and a half. And at that moment, it wasn't about eating healthier. It was about meeting the immediate need of firefighters. Right. So uh, we weren't just going to come and continue to push our health and wellness message. We wanted to give first. And I think because we were willing to give first, firefighters are more willing to accept and receive our message because when people know that you actually care about them they're more willing to listen to what you have to say absolutely <clears throat> and I, like i said again i think that is it's huge and it's a necessity and like you said sometimes god uses our pain or our past or our struggles or our, our hurt to basically uh help the betterment of other people and that's what you're doing like you said you didn't have to do it you could have let your struggles or your your past be what it is and you could have accepted that but you learned from that and you also learn from your, your dad and the things that he went through and you try to make a better man, not just for yourself and your family, but you talking about for other people and you know, you know how God operates, man. Indeed. Nothing's on a small scale. So I believe this is just the beginning of what God has for you. And like I said, I think it's incredible what you're doing. You I know? appreciate and I, it. And, and I hope that, you know, the government or other people can see the necessity of it and how it can be utilized and how this thing will grow to something much bigger than you know, what you, I know you got a, a big plans and goals for, but I'm talking about things that can see the, uh, uh, abundantly beyond what you're trying to do. And I think, I think we will. Um, I always say this, uh, the bureaucracy of government isn't conducive for helping people's immediate need, right? Um, it's just so much red tape. This person got to sign off on it. That person got to sign off on it. But the key is about us coming together, especially as a community. And what we found is that um, this has really been built on the backs of firefighters. Mm -hmm. um, firefighters were the first to donate to us. Even though it was for them, they were the first to donate to us. And then the community jumped in and said, you know what, we see what you're doing. We see where the dollars are going. We want to give, give too. Um, and then we had corporate donors come in. Come in. So while the government may sit back and um, try to figure out how they can get involved, I think it's really time for the community to serve those who serve us every day. Firefighters, you can't put a price on somebody uh, putting their life on the line, right? Um, and all we're asking us is for you to join us in this mission, to be a conduit of God's love for the fire service, to serve firefighters by just becoming a recurring donor. And we promise and we know that what you give to us actually hits the firehouse table. We pride ourselves on that. Currently, we don't have a staff. Um, I don't take a salary from food on the stove. What I didn't share is I recently took a leave of absence from the fire service to focus on this full time. It became difficult uh, to juggle both. And what will man make a man leave his comfortable government job to do something he doesn't get paid for, right? And I think that's God. It's God's call on my life to do that. Um, I tried to I tried to kind of push it to the side and find ways to not do it for a year, but it came to a point where either I was going to put a little bit into this and it was going to be a hobby because you can't firefighting is, isn't one of those type jobs where you can just have one foot in one foot out um, and my call is to serve firefighters so while they serve the public food on the stove serves them man that's that's man i, I think that's incredible like like i just want to touch on something real quick before i let you go in regards to what you just said when when something you'll do for free you know that's god's purpose for your life Something you'll do for free, but at the same time, we're helping other people. Indeed. So, yes, and, and that's the struggle that Christians, us, that we go through in regards to the purpose God has for our life. Because a lot of times, people are like, well, how am I going to survive? Or how, how, do, how am I going to make this work? i got a family. But God said, I got you. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's a scripture that speaks to that. He said, um, uh, Peter, as, as Jesus said, what about you? We left everything for you. He said, no, no man will fail to receive in this lifetime and the after um, more, right. right, in abundance. So um, I'm grateful, and I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing that scripture, but uh, God will meet all my needs. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm confident that he has met all my needs. I'm not even looking for him to meet all my needs. He has given me 
everything I need for the day and everything I need to carry out my mission. So I'm grateful for that. How can people help and how can people help and give and donate and help however they can to your organization? Become a recurring donor. Um, this calls, right? And um, I, I don't want to fail to make this seem as if uh, we don't need the public and need the community. We need you to be a part of this. I can't do it by myself. My team can't do it by themselves. Um, so we need recurring donors. Go to Food on the Stove. Uh, food on the stove dot org. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, food on the stove DC. You can follow us on Twitter, food on the stove underscore, and that's F O O D O N T H E S T O V E. Uh, but most importantly, go to our website, click the red donate button at the top right hand corner, and become a recurring donor. Whether it's ten, five. $15, $20 a month, um, all of this will go into feeding firefighters healthier meals and help us serve those who serve us every day. I want to thank Mr. Jonathan Tate for coming on and talking about food on the stove. Definitely appreciate your time. Man, Keep doing what you're you. doing. It's very commendable, man. Um, good luck to you the rest of the way. Um, and you guys stay tuned to the Crossover Talk Show with Travis Garrison. Got a next guest where we'll be talking about healthy eating and giving back in regards to food and helping the community. So stay tuned.